manifestation of power in the life of a believer now please pay attention this is a very important law it's called the law of submission the law of submission James chapter 4 and verse 7 please James chapter 4 and verse 7 please read with me let's read as a church ready one to read please submit yourselves therefore to God did you say full stop there full stop submit yourselves therefore to God then it now says resist the devil from the standpoint of that submission and he leaves you with an assurance consistent with Genesis remember resist the devil and he will flee from you so when you resist the devil and he does not flee the problem may not be the devil the problem may be from the position you are resisting him are you getting what I'm saying now he says submit yourselves therefore remember the intention is to be free from the devil but he says start by submitting yourself therefore unto God and then resist the devil and he will flee from you write this down you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you please look up if i told you right now or if you saw a picture of me and the u.s secretary of state would that make any effect or would that create any effect on your perception let's assume you've been trying to look for a u.s visa and you see me snap with the u.s consular general here in nigeria and probably the one in charge of africa and then you see me snap again with the secretary of state would you want to know me would you respect me why because the fact that i have this level of proximity with them enough to to have a photo it tells you that you can leverage on that relationship when people say they are close to government or close to power as we call it even if we don't like them we seem to respect them you are as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you is concerned so every time spiritual power is far from your life is also telling us the level of your relationship with the authority that sent you and the authority that backs you in every nation there are people who even though regardless their political office we say this one is close to the president this one is close to the prime minister and you will be surprised that the official person you were to meet you can bypass that person because you are looking for results you can even meet a little girl simply because she's the president's daughter is that true and you are talking with her whereas officially there was a route to follow and the lady says okay let me talk to my daddy for you and she talks and says i spoke to my father and he said come and see him tomorrow and everybody is angry you didn't follow the right way so well he has asked me to come are you getting the point now listen to me submission is a very powerful mystery that has not been understood in the body of christ that there is no individual who sustains the power within himself now i have taught here if i recall that the the nature of the dominion that we have been given as believers is not absolute dominion there are two levels of dominion there is absolute dominion and there is shared dominion is that true yes so the the dominion that the saints have received is not absolute dominion is shared dominion shared dominion it's like the light you have in your house you have light but it depends the the power holding company does not depend on you for light they generate it you have light and you can even help somebody within the limit of your partnership with them is that true the day a relationship goes sour with them what happens
Jesus revealed the power of submission in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, let's hurry up please. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5. Matthew 8 from verse 5. Very instructive. Let's follow carefully. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, the Bible says there came to him a centurion. A centurion will be the equivalent of a captain. Are we together? And beseeching him, what did he say? Verse 6. Saying, Lord, my servant lieth home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. That means, I give you that honor, I'm going to go all the way and come to your house. And then this man shocks Jesus with a very profound statement that is a lesson for us. Are you ready? The centurion answered and said, Lord... I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Does this look like Genesis 1, verse 3 to 4? Is there something that man knew? Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Because if it is God, when he says it, he will see it. Is that true? Next verse. This is what supported his understanding. For I am a man under authority that means this protocol is not strange by reason of my work with the army i understand authority and the power that comes through submission i am a man under authority in this case the authority of the roman government having soldiers also under me so you will have people under you and things under you to the degree to which you are under an authority everything will be above you if you are alone this man is teaching something powerful i first i first came under authority then as a result of that i now have soldiers under me because there is a threefold purpose of authority number one provision number two protection number three promotion this is the purpose of authority Number one, provision. Making the resources for your excelling available. Number two, promotion. By providing accreditation and leverage. Number three, protection. A system of defense while you go. I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Now watch this. By reason of the authority, I say to this man, there you go. And he goeth. Genesis 1 verse 3, 3 and 4 again. Are you seeing the pattern now? I am under authority. So when I say, I expect compliance. I can say to one, come. So when you are under authority, it gives you the power to say go. And it gives you the power to say come. Are we together now? And he cometh. And to my servant, do this. And he doeth it. Verse 10. Jesus had it. And... I didn't see you in any of my lectures who taught you this where did you learn this irrefutable secret of the kingdom that in your submission is your greatness that in your submission is your power that it is on the strength of your submission to authority that every other thing under you will hear you too that means before anything under you obeys it will check whether there is something you are obeying too you see when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He says, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. I have not found this construction, this understanding, authority. When Jesus came, he announced that he was the Son of God. There was a name Jesus never called himself throughout his earth work. He never said, I am God. I do not find it in the Bible. Number two, he never said, I am father. Two words, really. Jesus never called himself father when he walked upon the earth, even though he was equal with God. He called the Holy Ghost father. He called his father, father. 
but he never called himself father he remained son which is the reason why everything hurt him because when he walked upon the earth he continued to let them know that i am under the authority of the father this is what the centurion understood so when the demon saw him they said we are seeing a 33 year old body but you are the ancient of this he said keep quiet i'm the son the moment i say i am father they are now authorized to rebel against me because they, i i violate the law of submission can i tell you this submission frees you from the responsibility of backing yourself up it is it is painful to try to back yourself up if the centurion tells you go and you do not go you did not disobey him you disobeyed the government that backs him it now the government now will bring their full weight on you is that true so when god sends you and you go as a man of god you are in trouble it looks very very consoling but now you are left alone to defend yourself but if you go as one sent the son of the living god you see why peter got it right i know who you are he would have said you are god he said mm -mm. i know who you are based on your exploits you have come as son and the government that backs you is headed by the living god and jesus said that's it you got it behold what manner of love the father says that the father has bestowed upon us the bible says that we be called what sons you do not do exploits as father read your bible exploits is not for father fathers back those who do the exploits exploits is for sons are we blessed when jesus went to pray he didn't say god we are one so just listen quietly just because i'm on earth here doesn't mean that don't forget i'm still aware I'm, it's only 33 years here no he went and said our father teaching us how to pray in john 17 when he was praying himself the bible says he lifted up his eyes to heaven john 17 and verse 1 and he began to pray to the father can i tell you this return to the reality of sonship with the consciousness that there is an authority that backs you you see how children behave the moment you try to threaten them they verify whether your father is there with them and they can do all kinds of things for you in the presence of their father whether they are right or wrong you will deal with them at home but as far as that you have to protect that child for your namesake this is a very powerful key every time i minister I minister as touching this understanding that I'm a sent one number one or that there is an authority that backs me demons will verify it Jesus I know Paul I know who are you who are you does not mean where are you coming from who are you means where is the government that is backing you when david wanted to go and fight goliath read your bible ladies and gentlemen there was only one question saul asked him saul did not say um uh, okay i see that you're a fine young man give me the antecedents what have you killed mm -mm. he said whose son are you that's all i want to know let me know what lineage you are connected to because every lineage has its advantage whose son are you oh the benjamite go ahead but I can help you with my armor, he said, no, no, no.